So first I want to give a huge thank you to Halacha Workshop for hosting me and for putting together this amazing, amazing summit. And I want to go very, very deep into some incredible, incredible ideas for Pesach. But I want to start off with one of my favorite stories. And the story is of two boys who love to ice skate. And they love to ice skate, but there was no ice skating rink in their community. But every winter, the lake would freeze over and they would go ice skating. And that winter, the lake froze over, they went to ice skating like normal. And as they're ice skating, having an amazing time, the ice cracks underneath one of the boys. And the boy falls into the, the water and his friend tries to catch him, but he can't catch him on time. And his friend sees him and he starts to freak out. And he looks and he sees in the distance there's this giant tree. He goes over to this tree, pulls off this giant branch, skates back over, starts smashing and thrashing at the ice, is able to break open the ice, pulls his friend over. And by the time of Hatzola, the ambulance came, Baruch Hashem, everything was okay. So... One of the younger ambulance members just like sat there scratching his head saying, I don't understand. Like how did this little kid pull off this giant branch and, and break through a thick ice? Doesn't make any sense. And one of the older ambulance members sat there smiling and said, I know how we did it. I'll tell you how we did it. He says, how? He says, there was no one there to tell him that he couldn't. And it's such a powerful story. Because when it comes to every area of life, there's always going to be that negative mindset. The mindset that says, you're not good enough. You can't do it. You've never done it. What makes you think you could do it? You have ideas. You have aspirations. You have goals. You want to be better. You want to work on yourself, work on your midas, become a tamachacham. You want to grow. You want to achieve your potential. You can't do it. But if you can find a way to quiet out that voice and listen to that voice inside that says that you can then there's no limit to what you can accomplish. And it's the same thing for Pesach, and it's the same thing for the Seder night. And what I want to do today is I want to delve deep into the essence of the Seder night, and I want to overcome all those negative voices. And there's one negative voice that says, okay, every year you want to make the Seder more meaningful. You want to make the Seder deeper. You want to tap in yourself to deeper themes of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and what it means to tap into Pesach but you've never done it before or it just never works out and it's just not possible. I want to really put that aside and I want to say, let's tap into what the Seder could be. Let's tap into what Pesach could be. And what I want to do in this year was I want to provide a meaningful and deep framework for the Pesach Seder so that you on an individual level can understand the essence of the Seder night of Pesach and that Bezos Hashem, you'll have plenty of not only good wordlach, but you'll have the depth and the essence and the ikare amuna and the ikar of what the avoda is on the Seder night. And I want to start off with some general framing ideas. And the first idea is why do we start off by basically reading all the steps of the Seder? Right? And no other chag do we start off saying, here's what we're going to do. Right, we don't start off sukkah saying, we're going to shake the lulav, we're going to send the sukkah. Why in Pesach do we go and read all the steps? And part of the idea is that there's really no other night of the year that we have so much packed in. And when it comes to the Pesach Seder night, we're trying to achieve the impossible. We're trying to achieve so much. And the only way to do that is to have clarity, right? If you want to achieve anything with your life, you have to have goals. If you don't have clarity, if you don't have structure, if you don't really build that clarity, you're not going to achieve anything. And it's like you can take the most amazing archer in the world. If you blindfold him and you say, hit the target, they're not going to be able to. Because in order to achieve a goal, you have to have clarity on the target, on the destination. You want to learn. You want to get in good physical shape. You want to develop your career. You want to become a Tamil Chacham. You want to connect to Hashem. You want to do anything meaningful with your life. You have to have clear goals. And then you have to have to you have to have a clear trajectory. So the essence of going through the entire order of the whole Seder night before we get started is because there's so much to accomplish. And the question now is what are we trying to accomplish? So the first and most important thing is that. The Seder night is, is a night that involves everyone. 
So you're going to have people who are brilliant. You're going to have small children. You're going to have all different types of family members. You're going to have different, every Seder is different, every family is different. The most important part of the Seder night is to recognize that it needs to be something that is meaningful for everyone. That means, as the Rambam says, that in the Sipri T.S. Mitzrayim, the essence of giving over and telling over the story of Mitzrayim, which is the Iker Mitzvah of the Seder night, you do it for small children, you do it for advanced children, you do it for yourself. You know, the Shulchan Aruch brings down that if there are no children there, if you only have brilliant Hamidi Chachamim at the Seder table, you still have a Mitzvah, Sipri T.S. Mitzrayim, because this is not just about the simple fundamentals of introductory, just kind of, you know, telling over the story of the Jewish people. There's something a lot more going on here. And that's why at the very essence of Pesach, there's this Chamura element. There's this Klali element. We're all part of something. And to start off with perhaps the most important question, the question is, why are questions so important? I mean, so much of the Seder is just questioning. Manishtana, why is this night different? The, the answer to literally every question of the Seder night is we want to encourage the children to ask questions. Now the question is, why are we so focused on questions? And one of the answers is that the only way to really learn the only way to really learn and to grow is to question. Because what is a question? There are, there are inappropriate questions, as in there's a question which is designed to attack, to undermine, to destroy. But the only way to grow is to recognize the gap that you don't yet know. And for children, they can literally not know the basics. But as you start to develop an understanding of life and Torah and purpose and why we're here in this world, you start to understand that the only way to understand is to realize you don't understand. The only way to learn is to realize you don't already know. And by questioning, you recognize the gap. And the Gemara explains that the Yetz Sahara tries to convince us that we already know everything. A sui, like Esav, like you're already complete, you're already made, you're already whole. But by recognizing that you're not, you get to learn and grow. And that's really the difference between the Chacham and the Russia. They both ask questions. But the Russia asks questions in order to distance, to reject, to say this is not worth learning. And the Chacham asks a question saying, I'm curious, I'm thirsty, I don't yet know, but I want to know. I want to be a part of this. And the greatest kawach, the greatest strength one can ever develop in life is a hunger, a thirst, a desire to learn. Because you recognize you don't yet know. And there's so much that you do know, but it's not rejecting what you already know to learn something new. It's deepening. It's expanding. It's interconnecting. It's allowing the, the deepening. It's enhancing the quality of that which you know. And that's also, as the Beis HaLevi explains, the essence of Nasa Venishma. Nasa Venishma is not saying that we're just accepting what Hashem is going to tell us no matter what. It's something much deeper. It's saying we're going to accept it no matter what. But Nishma, as the Beis HaLevi explains, means that's the Torah element. That's questioning and deepening and trying to understand it. It's not accepting on condition that we understand. It's saying we're accepting it no matter what, but we want to understand. We want to deepen our understanding, our connection with it. And that really is the essence of life. It's saying we're in this world, but why are we in this world? We're going to devote our lives to Torah and to MS, but what is Torah? What is MS? We're going to live our lives as, as Avdeh Hashem, but wh who is Hashem? What does it mean to be an Avdeh Hashem? What, what is this life about? What is this world about? And that's why so much of the Seder night is about deepening our connection to our Avodah Hashem deepening our understanding of the relationship between the physical and the spiritual. That's part of the reason why we have a kara, the Seder plate. And part of it is, again, we want children to ask. Part of it is we want hands-on learning, so everything in the kara represents something, but it's much deeper than that. It's much deeper than that. It's recognizing 
that literally every aspect of Avodah Hashem, every aspect of living a Torah life, is understanding how to connect the transcendent to the imminent, the, the spiritual to the physical, the, the lofty, infinitized nature of conceptual reality to the concrete, corporeal, physical world we live in. And that's why everything in the car, everything on the seer plate is something physical. They represent something spiritual. As the Ramchal, the Ramban, the Vilna and many others explain, the Midrash has a stack of Raisa Barama, that Hashem used the Torah to create the physical world. What does that mean? It means that everything in this world is a reflection of something spiritual, something infinitely deeper. And the only way you can live a meaningful spiritual life is by engaging in the physical. As the Maharal explains, that's the essence of mitzvah. Mitzvah comes from the Russian of Tzavta, which means to connect. Why? Because you can count the number of spiritual mitzvahs on your hand. Mental mitzvahs, right? Believe in Hashem, don't serve idolatry, don't be jealous. Literally every mitzvah is spiritual. But through a physical medium, right? We eat matzah, we shake a lulav, we wear it fill in. It's engaging the physical world. Why? Because that's how you live a life of real oneness. It's easy to just be spiritual. It's easy to just be physical. The real depth of Torah is oneness. It's tefaris, it's harmony. It's synthesizing mind and body, spiritual and physical, infinite and finite. And that's tzavta, mitzvah, to connect the spiritual and physical, to connect that which is transcendent to that which is imminent. And that's why when you learn to live a deep life, you're learning to see the infinite through the finite, see the spiritual through the physical. And that's why also echad miyodeya. What's this echad miyodeya? Who knows one? Who knows two? Why are you associating numbers with spiritual concepts? And also, it's at the end of the seder. Like the kids are sleeping at this point. What's this kind of you know silly little you know sing along? But it's the deepest possible concept because when you learn to see everything, everything physical representing something spiritual, every finite number reflecting a deeper spiritual concept, you, tr- you, you uplift the very paradigmatic nature of association, of correlation, of meaning, of definitive reality, where everything means something deeper. And that's the goal of this Seder night. It's to get to a point where you're so in touch with Torah and depth and wisdom and purpose and truth that everything that you see connects you to something deeper. And that's also the essence of going on a spiritual journey in in your own personal life. It's starting to become someone capable of building the identity of I can go on a deep journey. I can become someone better. I can become the greatest, truest version of myself. And that's really, if you really think about it, why do we have so much wine at the Seder? And you know, wine's a very complicated, complicated entity in life. It makes you drunk. There are opinions that the Eitzadas was wine. Noah came out of the table. There are opinions that he got drunk and went back to the original son of the Eitzadas. Wine's very complicated. Why do we have wine? Four cups of wine. We also have wine by Purim. Why, why, what's this like? You know, strange. Is, is wine something which is negative? Is wine something that's positive? But wine is actually, in a very deep sense, a reflection of what Pesach represents. Because as the Maharal explains, everything in the physical world is potential. It can be used for the good or for the bad. And the more power it has, the more it can be used for the good, and the more it can be used for the bad. So for example, you have twenty, you have a couple hundred volts of electricity, it can empower your device, or it can give you a little electric shock. You know, some good, some bad. You have you know, 20,000 volts, it can light up a neighborhood or it can electrocute someone. All right, so the more potential, the more it can be used for the good or for the bad. Everything in the physical world can be used for the good or for the bad. Everything in life is pure potential. And how you choose to use it is the definitive nature of how you transform that potential. So when it comes to wine, it can make people drunk. It can make people lose their dance. It can make people do really dumb things. It can make people just lose all of their seichel and every component of what makes them great. But it can also be what opens you up to something great. Wine opens up the consciousness. It opens up the mind to transcend boundaries. And so much of what Kedusha is, 
It's that realm of transcending boundaries, the spiritual, the infinite, the transcendent, that which is lofty and ethereal. But being able to synthesize that with things that have boundaries and limitation, that's a life of Kedusha, of truth, of oneness. And that's why wine is the centerpiece of literally all of Torah life. Because, yes, it can be used inappropriately, but we choose to use it appropriately. That's the essence of Torah, right? That's the essence of why, if you think about it, literally, we have wine when it comes to getting married. We have, but it's Kedusha, literally, Kedusha, Kedushan, right? We have wine by the Persmila, which, as the Maharal explains, on the eighth day, Lamala min hatava. That's why Hanukkah is on the eighth day. That's why Hanukkah was done with Shemen, which is Shmon of eighth, without getting into the depth of it. But, the whole, I mean, we could get into depth, but basically, we live in a finite physical world. It's built off of Teva, which is really built off of seven, seven days of the week, seven uh, lights in the spectrum of light, seven notes in the musical scale. Eighth, the eighth is Lamala Minat Teva, that which transcends. So if you have, let's say, a radio, it has physical parts. If you connect in the right way, you get a radio frequency, something that transcends the sum of its parts. Your physical body, it's healthy, you have a Neshama, right? Something that is transcendent that's connected that's beyond the body but also within it right and the shem is also the same root as the same same essence of that root of shame right shmona shame essence name it, it's the shama it's tapping into that soul component of something wine is what opens up something to ascend past its physical boundaries that's why when you drink wine you your mind kind of transcends its normal realm of consciousness when it comes to every aspect of life, when it comes to making Kiddush on Shabbos, the Arbikosos, when it comes to Seder night, marriage, bris mila, we're, we're trying to take that which is physical and expand it past its boundaries to become something not that transcends the physical, but something transcendent within the physical. That's living a life of Kedusha, a life of harmony, a life of synthesis. And that's why the Bali Mashav of the Vilna Gon and many others explain that wine is the most spiritual physical entity. As the Vilna Gun explains, that most physical things deteriorate as it ages. Your body ages and deteriorates over time. Plants, same thing. Food deteriorates, rots. Wine gets better as it ages. It transcends the normal aging of time. And also most things, the more you eat, the more you drink, the less thirsty or hungry you become. As opposed to wine, the more you drink, the more you want it. Right? Most of the time you drink something, you get full. You eat, you get full. For wine, the more you drink, the more you want. So we're talking about the most physical entity, which actually is also the most spiritual entity. It can lead you down the worst possible path. It can also lead you towards the highest possible path. The goal of the Seder night is taking everything which is potential and is directing it towards its highest possible sense, its highest possible direction. And why? Because the whole essence of Seder night is connecting back to Hashem. We're connecting back to Arut. We're connecting back to Kosh Baruch Hu. And that's why so much of the Seder night is about Akar Satov. We say, you know, Halal. We say Dayenu. What's Dayenu? You know, what, what's the essence of Dayenu? It's being thankful for every step along the way, for everything Akash Baruch Hu gave us. But the deeper essence of all this Akar Satov that we have in the Seder night. It's about something much deeper. What's Hakar Satov? When you say thank you, you're not just being grateful. Hakar Satov is Hakar. Hakara to recognize Tov, the source of the good that come your way. So Hakar Satov is actually training your mind to source things back to their root. And when you can, re when you can recognize that everything in your life comes from Hashem, you start to be mock your Tov and to say thank you Hashem for everything in my life. Now you build a relationship with Hashem. You've trained your mind to be deeper. And you start recognizing Hashem in your life. And that's the goal of the entire Seder night, because that's the goal of Pesach. As the Rabban explains, it's Hashem's Gilui in the world. It's where Hashem revealed Himself to the world, specifically to Klai Yisrael, but the world as a whole. Why? Because this is the essence of... The, the, the whole goal of the Seder night is really tapping into... Hashem's unique relationship with Klai Yisrael. Hashem's unique relationship with the Jewish people. Why? So Chazal say that Pesach is Pesach. It's the speaking mouth. Pesach is where we give over the Masorah. Pesach is where we ask questions. 
Pesach is where we talk about seed for Yetzirah Mitzrayim. So let's start very basic. What's the difference between Zeichel Yetzirah Mitzrayim, which is to remember, which is we, we have a mitzvah every day of the year, and Sipur, to tell over the story. So there's a lot of classic answers. The Minchas Chinach says the difference is that all year long there's an individual mitzvah, but Sipur Yetzirah Mitzrayim, the unique mitzvah of the Seder night, is to tell it over to others. Uh, Chaim Brisk said usually the mitzvah is via statement, and the Seder night we do it via questions and answers. Uh, some say, you know, the year-long mitzvah is the general mitzvah. When it comes to Seder night, we do it in more detail. Uh, Chaim Brisk also said that on the Seder night you do it over the mitzvahs of the of, of the Seder, the, the different mitzvahs when it comes to Matzah, Mar, and Karim Pesach. There's also a very deep answer to the Maharal and the Rabbam suggest. The Maharal brings it, flushes out the Rambam, because the Rambam says that on the Seder night, you need to imagine as if you yourself are leaving Mitzrayim. And the Maharal explains what's going on. All year long we talk about what happened when we left Mitzrayim. But on the Seder night, we need to make it something that's happening right now. We need to experience leaving Mitzrayim. And that's why we do over the Matzah, over the Mitzvah the night, because we have to recreate the Gula experience. And what is the Gula experience? The Gula experience is multifaceted. We're tapping into something very deep in the Seder night. What does it mean to re-experience leaving Mitzrayim? On the one hand, what is Gula? What is freedom? In the secular world, freedom is the ability to do whatever you want. But the real depth of freedom is that there is two freedoms that happened on the Seder night, on the on Pesach night. One is a physical freedom, we left Mitzrayim. The second is a true spiritual freedom. We left of Zara. We left back falseness. We left back living a life of, of real sheker. What does that mean? The real freedom is being able to become your true self, to actualize your potential, to become who Hashem created you to become. And you can't do that when you're physically bound, when you're off control of your time and your mindset and your decisions, but you also can't do that when you don't have the identity of someone who was born for greatness, born for a life of, of truth, of idealism, of living a life of, of purpose and meaning. And that's why the Iker essence of Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, of Sipri Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, is sourcing back our purpose in this world. Why are we here? So the Rambam explains that the, is, the Iker of Sipri Yitzhiya Mitzrayim is talking about the Ikari Emuna, the miracles that occurred when Hashem revealed Himself to the world. And the Ramban explains that the source of Ari Kari Muna really come from that night. Hashem revealed that He exists, that He knows what's happening in the world, that He's all-powerful. But most importantly, Hashem revealed that nature itself is a miracle. The Ramban explains that once you realize that Hashem can overturn nature, and all the rules of nature cease to exist when Hashem wants it to, Hashem, the Ramban explains that the Nisim Neglaim were Megala the Nisim Nistarim. That really nature itself is a miracle, which is what Purim revealed. That now the Hashem, the, the original stage of history was open miracles, Nevua, prophecy, Kabbalah, Torah, the Man, the Bear Miriam. We now live in a stage where all those miracles stopped, Nevua stopped. But why? Because now we have to choose to see the miraculous within the natural. And that's also the difference, uh, another difference between Sipri Yitzhiya Mitzrayim and Zeichel Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, which is not Sipri Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, is we go back to that time where Hashem openly revealed Himself to the world. Open miracles, the Makos, Kriyas, Yamsa, it was amazing. But Zeichel Yitzhiya Mitzrayim is recognizing the miraculous now within the natural. The second stage of history, where there are no longer open miracles, but we get to see the miraculous within the fact that we're alive, that we can breathe, that our bodies are working, that we have a mind that could enter into the world of ideas and the intellect and can contemplate the nature of truth. We can learn Torah, we can live Torah, we can work in our midos, we can enter into the world of Gemilas Chasanim, and we can live out a life of Torah and truth. And that's the, the two stages of history where you have the Sipri Yitzhiya Mitzrayim Pesach but the Zeich Yitzhiya Mitzrayim of entering into the stage of Purim where you find the miraculous within the natural. And that's the greatest opportunity but it's also the greatest responsibility because this is 
the, the very essence of the Jewish story. If you think about it, the whole Seder night is the climax of the initial stage of Hashem building the relationship, with the, building His unique relationship with Klai Yisrael. Because what is Klai Yisrael's mission? is to live a life of MS and truth in this world, to close the gap, to reveal HaKadosh Baruch in this world, to live a life of truth and reveal the truth, to live a life of mitzvahs and and, 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 and to really represent the embodiment of Hashem in this world. Adam said, created that gap. Amalek tries to keep that gap open. And the essence of Torah is to close that gap. And originally, you know, if we go through the timeline, there was Adam Harishon, then there was Noach, then there was Avram, Avram, then there was Yishmon Yitzchak, went to Yitzchak, then there was Yaakov Nisav, went to Yaakov. Klai Yisrael went down to Mitzrayim. And when Klai Yisrael became a nation, leaving Mitzrayim and going to be Makabal, their purpose, maybe Makabal, it be Makabal, our mission in this world, that became the Jewish story. That became our story. That became the story of Torah. That became the story of Tanakh. It became the story of Klai Yisrael until nowadays. And the big question is, we see in Avadim Hayyinu Vakol Hamar Belasapar Beitzis Mitzrayim Harizim Meshubach. Whoever increases in how they engage in the mitzvah of Sipu Yitzis Mitzrayim, that's praiseworthy. But the question is, what does that mean? What does it mean to increase? Say, you know, say more different Torah? Maybe it's a say deeper different Torah. But there's a, there's a deep, life changing yesod. Which is, what does it mean to increase in the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim? What's the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim? When did that story end? If the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim is the story of the Jewish people, the birth of the Jewish people, where they want to be Makabal to receive their mission in life, to actualize their purpose, and to be Megala HaKadosh Baruch in this world, and to live a life of MS, and Avodos Hashem, and learning Torah, and living Torah, and working on our readers, that's the story of the Jewish people. When did that story end? How do you tell over that story? Did it end when they left Mitzrayim? Did it end by Tiris Yamsov? Did it end when they received the Torah? Did it end when they entered into Israel? That and when they were sent into Gaul for the first time, like when did the Jewish story end? The answer, obvious answer, is that the story didn't end; it's still going. So, how do you increase in how you tell over the story of Yisias Mitzrayim? Yes, you want to tap into the Seder. Yes, you want to tap into the history, the past, what happened. But the best way to tell over the story of the Jewish people is to write yourself into that story. It's to devote your life to becoming the best version of yourself, to actualizing your potential, to thinking about why Hashem created you, how you can write yourself. Because lesaper also means a safer, a book, lesaper to tell over, a sofer, a scribe. It means to inscribe yourself into the story of the Jewish people. And if you can devote your life to Klai Yisrael, to actualizing your potential, to becoming everything Hashem created you to become, that's learning, building a family, raising that family, devoting your life to your community, to your kehillah, to your tzibur, to becoming the best version of you. The chol hamarba, whoever increases, whoever devotes themselves to that at the highest possible level, at the highest possible level, chol hamarba lasaper means whoever devotes their life to the continuation of the story of the Jewish people. Arizem shubach, that's praiseworthy. That's ideal. And that's the goal of the Seder night. Is we're trying to become everything we can become. We're trying to give over the Messiah to our children, to our friends, to our family. But more importantly than giving it over to others, we're trying to become a deeper part of it. We're trying to devote our lives to the highest possible ideal. The Chol Hamarba. To actualize our potential, to devote our lives, our lives to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, to live a life of meaning, a purpose, and with Hashem, and to really commit ourselves to becoming the best we can be, and devoting that to Klai Yisrael, the Chol Hamarbe, Harizem Shubach.